The world has $250 uh, trillion dollars of debt, which is a lot of it is credit, but we only have around $50 trillion dollars of currency. How is that possible? You, you know what I'm asking, right? We have $50 trillion dollars of coins and currency. We have a quarter trillion dollars, $250 trillion dollars of debt. How does we have, that work we, we have a lot of good faith based on the, the prowess of the U.S. printing press. I mean, the U United States maintains reserve currency status. That's Everywhere. fake money, though. That's not real money. That's fake money. That's two hundred trillion dollars of fake money. Oh, you're 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 really. I know, but it's all based on faith. How long is sustain? How long is it sustainable, though, wow. to go at that pace? In theory, and if you listen to what you're being told, everything's going to be okay. Trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars, with the United States in the lead. The United States, by far, vis-a-vis -vis any other country, is taking on more debt to address the coronavirus than anybody else on the planet, including China. That's saying something. And we're being told that it's all going to be fine because you can just have the Federal Reserve, which is what they're going to do this year, finance all debt that's being taken on, put all of it on their balance sheet. We came into this with the Federal Reserve's balance sheet somewhere in the neighborhood of four trillion. It is likely that we will get into double digits, ten trillion dollars. That's a scary thought. You know, here's some data here. But before I get into this, how much do you, as an economist, look at the debt to GDP ratio? Is that a big factor? Do you look at that as a big factor, or not really? It's not a big concern. Oh, I think it's a huge concern. It is. So you and and now that we know that it's truly Milton Friedman behind me, yeah. I always adhered to his philosophy that there is no such thing as a free lunch. You can buy time. I mean, God knows we've seen a lot of time purchased, bought, but we haven't seen it paid for. So yes, I think that there will be ramifications. Okay, so when you're saying that as an economist, you do look at nations and say Japan's at 221% debt to GDP ratio, they're about to have a massive recession taking place, it's going to take them a couple of decades to recover. Do you go to extreme measures when you see numbers like that, or it's not a, a measure point that you look at and say that's a very big factor? Well, it, it really is a country by country basis, and I don't want to, I'm not trying to back out of the question, but internally in Japan, they own their own debt. Their fate's not necessarily tied to other countries. Which means? that they're not beholden to the kindness of strangers, unlike the United States, where Japan owns a trillion dollars of U.S. Treasury debt, China, China owns over a trillion yeah. dollars of U.S. Treasury debt. We assume that we can take on as much debt as we possibly can imagine and that our borrowing costs will never go up because we just assume that we're number one. It, 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 to, to elaborate what you just said, is that, is that in a sense of saying, you know, we're married, we have a family, the Bed David family only borrows money from Bed David family. Okay, that's Japan. But U.S., the family here borrows money from anybody, strangers, whoever that can't. Is that mm -hmm. a best, good way of putting over Japan versus U.S. because we borrow from anybody? And we also borrow from ourselves, and we, we the, the Treasury issues it, and the Federal Reserve buys it. So then, if that's the case, let me give you this number and tell me what you think about this. China's in debt 5.2 trillion. Brazil's, Brazil's at 2 trillion. Uh, Japan's got 9 trillion, and if you look at the debt to GDP ratio, Japan's at the top of 221, Greece 179, which we pretty much know why, Portugal 138, Italy 138, Belgium 115, US 106, Spain 106, UK 86, France 98.4, Germany 62, you ready for this number? Russia 17%. <laughs> and they bought 400 tons of gold the last couple of years. A lot of these nations that have their gold have been sitting on the same amount of gold for a while, but Russia's been coming up on the gold uh, leaders bulletin. Why are they at 17%? Their debt, by the way, Russia's debt is 217 billion. I don't have it written anywhere here, but well, Russia's debt is- Because you don't have think, any billions on your page, you only have trillions. Trillions. Russia's only at $217.3 billion mm -hmm. as of February of 2020, I believe. Mm -hmm. Are they looking at the saying, we're gonna make a vertical move in the next couple of years here because we're a little bit more responsible than others, or no, that doesn't mean anything. So people ask me all the time, because if you look at, if you, if you study the way people think, and I'm talking about, without naming any names, the socialists say that we can print as much money as we want. That let's say that our debt right now is 25 trillion, let's round up given what we know we've just spent as a nation. But the socialists, the, the universal basic income say that you can easily double it and because we have a reserve currency status, and because we have not seen inflation in generations, we're gonna get away with it and our borrowing costs are never going to rise. And as long as our borrowing costs never rise and inflation never rears its ugly head, then we can borrow to kingdom come. 
And when these things work, they work until they don't work. But at some point, if the rest of the world begins to push back, let's say certain countries emerge stronger from this global recession than others. It tends to be, if you're going to make a move, it tends to be he who has dry powder, the least amount of debt, the most hard assets, is able to assume more leverage and power than they otherwise would based on looking at the size of the country's economy. In other oh. words, to your point, Russia has not weakened their balance sheet. They've strengthened it. And their long-term planners, China's a long-term planner as well. China has a ton of debt, but China also has been a lender to many nations with natural resources throughout the world and quietly been colonizing a big portion of the world and they happen to have an ally in Russia. So you can connect many dots. No doubt about it. Theoretically. No doubt about it. But all of this debt we're taking on does weaken our position on the global stage.